What up is Marcus from Dynasty Football Dads. We have a Jerry Judy free signed jersey. Uh, all you have to do is be a subscriber for a chance to win. We're going to be handing that out or giving that away at 1K. We're already 70% of the way there. So awesome. We're getting close. Uh, so we are going to be doing, we're going to be talking about round one. Talking about round two, uh, where some of these players went, uh, what does that do to their dynasty draft capital, and then where are some of these players, where are we hoping they're going, or where I think they're going to go, and just kind of, there's some there's some really big hopes here for round two and round three, uh, but what we know is after round three, there's a huge drop off, so these first two days of watching the NFL draft are so important, and if you haven't watched that video, I would definitely do that. I posted that a couple days ago, uh, maybe I think it was like Monday-ish, about why the top three round capital is important. It should, does show that the if you from round one to round two and three, there is a little bit of a drop off for sure. And so when we look at uh, quarterbacks, we'll, we'll, we're gonna take a little pause on that. Running backs, we had two running backs drafted compared to one last year in CEH. Uh, and CEH was, of course, the one on one. Uh, Najee Harris is easily going to be the one on one in pretty much every one QB league, or at least he should be. I mean, we are talking about elite. Uh, I, I love his talent. And I thought he was, I was worried he was going to get drafted after Travis Etienne just for that fact. Uh, I, I was worried he wasn't going to go to a team like Pittsburgh, and I thought he was going to maybe get stuck with a, a little bit poorer situation. Maybe he goes to Buffalo, and it's a little bit more frustrating because Josh Allen's there. But. He goes to Pittsburgh, which is a perfect situation. A perfect situation. I mean, I, you have a passing, pass-catching running back. I mean, you are talking better than ETN and a lot of other backs. I mean, you're talking about he is going to be the one-on-one. He should be the one-on-one over Jamar Chase, over Devontae Smith, any of the wide receivers. Like, he's easily the one-on-one. Now we have an issue here. Do we take an elite running back or do we start going into these elite wide receivers? And, and for the, the long period of time, the first three months, I said, hey, we need to take these running backs. We are, at least I hope, and I'm predicting Javante Williams be taking into this kind of group of picks in the first round, of the, or the first part of the second round. You have the Falcons, the Jets, Miami, all these teams that need a running back, uh, and all these teams that have early second round capital. And I, and I could see, my prediction is I think he's going to go to the Falcons. I think actually Trey Sermon's going to get picked before him. I, that's just my guess. I think Trey Sermon's going to be picked as a Jet. I think that's kind of the running style they, they're going to go for. I think they, they drafted, of course, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker as a guard there for that. So, and, and Sermon's not a top three running back for me, but Javante Williams is. And, and there is probably, I would say, like an 80% chance that Javante Williams is going to be my RB2. And again, probably that same amount of percent chance that he's going to be my 102 in, in one QB leagues. So that is where he's going to be. Why is Travis Etienne now from running back two to running back three after the Jags situation? I see this being a poor man's Saints version of the team. You have Latavius Murray and you have Alvin Kamara. And I am going to say that James Robinson is probably going to be run like Latavius Murray. He's going to be utilized that. But then you're going to see times where they're both on the field. And you're going to see a lot of times where Travis Etienne is going to be primarily used like kind of like Kamara. He is not the route runner Kamara is. That's the problem. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a guy that does more swing routes and things like things like these basically halfback angles and all these different little like little routes, not these choice routes or anything like that. Very simplistic offense for Travis Etienne. Where do I see that? Well, I don't think Jags are going to all of a sudden turn a dial and go from a the worst team in the NFL to like a 10 and 16. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. I think 2021 is going to be a rough year for the, not a rough year for the Jakes, but I think it's going to be very interesting for that backfield. I could see Travis Etienne having a really good 2022 year, but I could be seeing us sitting here going, why on Travis Etienne? We thought he was really, really talented, but we, he didn't perform like a top two or three running back in 2021. Uh, I, I feel like he's, he's going to ease himself into it. And we saw Kamara come out and had a, an amazing rookie year. And yes, that is Travis Etienne's ceiling, but that's just. I know I'm rambling on, but I think Travis Etienne is going to be my 103 here. James Robinson is legit. Like, I feel like he's, if you saw him, you thought he was a round two, round three running back last year. He, he isn't. He's an undrafted running back. And yes, Urban Meyer has no affiliation and no uh, feelings towards James Robinson because he didn't draft him. And he didn't, he, he wasn't the coach there last year. But I think James Robinson showed last year 
that he can be on the NFL field and that he can produce. That being said, that I mean that that being said, I think that's going to take away from Travis Etienne here. So running backs right now, I am seeing Javante Williams be that 102 and 104. I am really hoping that Kenneth Gainwell finds a really good spot. I have him going to Miami, but Miami Jets, uh, Buffalo. Uh, I'm trying to think what other teams have that early second. I think that's it. I think that there, there might be one or two other ones that I'm forgetting right off the bat. But that is where I'm hoping he's going is that early second round. Um, I don't. I don't think I, I'm starting to lean away that Seattle is going to start taking capital in the second round. They're, they're a little bit later in the second round. But that's where I foreshadow some of these running backs, wide receivers. Jamar Chase is, man, it, it's tough because Jamar Chase landed in the perfect situation. And my talent wise, Devontae Smith is better than Jamar Chase, but they're in the same tier. So when you have the same tier and Devontae Smith is with a, a quarterback that cannot pass very well, Jalen Hurts cannot pass very well. It's not an argument. It's just, it, it's fact. It's not really an argument. You have a guy, yes, they, they, they've meshed with each other before, but you have also Joe Burrow on the other spectrum who is a I think legit quarterback and who is very good at passing. So Jamar Chase is going to have that head over nod still over Devontae Smith. He, Jamar Chase is now the 101 at wide receiver. So he is right now probably in that 104, 105 range. We have, of course, Devontae Smith. I understand he was the third wide receiver taken off the board, but I have him ahead of Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell now moves into wide receiver three just for the fact that Miami is an awesome spot. Again, he gets to match with Tua, uh, a quarterback that he knows and probably loves, and that's probably why the situation, why they drafted him, and he had really high draft capital there. Uh, so he's going to be number, my number three wide receiver. Uh, just an electric, high, high ceiling. We're talking, yes, he could boss, but he is the high, one of the highest ceilings. 104 right now is going to be Rashad Bateman. Ravens, I know that's a, a really poor situation, uh, but he's a really talented wide receiver there. It's... It's, it's really tough because you were splitting up 18 or we're splitting up 180 yards a game for Lamar Jackson among three, four players. And that's going to be a problem because you're going to have J.K. Dobbins is going to get some. Maybe even Gus Edwards is going to get a little bit out of the backfield. Mark Andrews is the primary target there. And then you're going to have still Marquise Brown. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to split the 180 yards. Me saying Rashad Bateman at wide receiver four, I, it, it would be very interesting, very, very interesting if, like Elijah Moore or Rondell Moore goes somewhere amazing because then he could even slip down. Right now I have Elijah Moore um, going to the Lions, which I think would be an awesome spot for him. And I think Rondell Moore is going to go to the 2.49, the Cardinals, which again, with Larry, I mean, getting old, you got Hopkins, who's amazing. And then you have AJ Green, who's also ancient i mean you you need that kind of underneath guy and, and kirk has done it but he's been way too boomer bust terrace marshall 250 i have him going back to i have him going to miami i have them drafting another wide receiver we saw this with the raiders last year when they drafted henry ruggs and brian edwards i could see the same thing why not like they need more wide receiver help give Tua as much help as possible and keep rising the Tua stock Amon Ross St. Brown, I have going to the Pats, and Tylon, Tylon Wallace, I have going to the Saints at the end of the second round. I think, oh, tight ends, uh, still Pat Farmuth going to Dallas here at 244. And then Brevin Jordan, I have him going in the third round to the Jags. Again, another Jag. Uh, not just as a guy, it, actual Jacksonville Jaguars, which we can call maybe the Clemson Jaguars now. Um, I, I was calling uh, the Dolphins the Alabama Dolphins or the uh, Miami Crimson Tide, but we are switching out of that a little bit now. Well, I mean, we still can. I mean, I just wanted them to get Najee Harris. I thought that would have been kind of cool, that kind of trifecta there. Uh, so what are we seeing in the second round? We really need some of these. Run it's going to be interesting to see where some of these running backs fall. J Jamar Jefferson, uh, Chuba Hubbard. I really don't see those guys going into the third round. Uh, the three running backs I think are we're going to see are, are first, well, four. I think we're going to see four in, the, in day two into day three. Uh, I think we're going to see Javante Williams. I think he's going to be the first one off the board. Eh, him and Trey Sermon are going to be really close. And Trey Sermon, I'm not a fan of necessarily. I just think he's going to be drafted super high of what he did at the end. Of, it's, like, it's like that last taste in your mouth. What do you get? Well, I mean, he had that really last great half of his uh, his final season. So, I mean, we're talking he destroyed Northwestern. And then he was doing super well and then until the championship game he got hurt. Anyways. So I think Trey Sermon, uh, Javante Williams is going to be neck and neck there. Uh, and then I think Kenneth Gainwell and Michael Carter are both going to be drafted uh, in this like late second to early third round. 
And so then we have this kind of group of like, where do we see uh, the Jamar Jefferson, the Jarrett Patterson's, um, I, I know even deeper, we got Elijah Mitchell that I really, that I really like. I mean, we're probably going to see these guys in round four five and six. We're hoping that we can sneak uh, one or two of these guys in the end of the third so we can start hopefully promoting some more running backs in there because uh, honestly we want some of these running backs to be drafted high even if we don't care a lot for them because i think the depth of this running back class is super weak we want some of these wide receivers to drop some of these wide receivers these talented wide receivers start to drop and then now you are getting a tier two or tier three wide receiver four or five picks later and that is where you can start making these awesome decisions where uh, these other guys are going i want jamar jefferson and you're like perfect or let's say Jerry Patterson gets drafted in a third take him you can have him I'm gonna draft Tylen Wallace or I'm gonna draft uh, Tutu Atwell or who, whoever it might be I mean I don't really care for Tutu Atwell uh, also we haven't even talked about this Kadarius Tony where is he he's he's my wide receiver nine I honestly hate the spot for the Giants he's gonna be moving down like they have Darius Slate in there. I mean, they, they have Kenny Galladay there. They're going to have Barkley. I mean, Daniel Jones cannot throw for 5,000 yards. So, Kadarius Tony, awesome gadgety player for, for fantasy football, which is all we care about. He will be great for the Giants, for a NFL perspective. But he will not perform. He'll be Percy Harvin light. And Percy Harvin was awesome, but still, fantasy production, eh. So, what are you going to get from Kadarius Tony? You're going to get wide receiver 48 50 and you're gonna have these two three games where he's gonna go crazy and you're gonna have eight catches for 150 yards and a touchdown and three rushes for 30 yards and a touchdown and you're gonna be like i have a jackpot and then you're gonna have another game where it's one catch for or three catches for seven yards and four rushes for eight yards and you're like well that was nothing and you're gonna probably have more of those than you are gonna have the the boom game. So Kadarius Tony, I am off the Kadarius train. And since this video has been so long, let's talk about some of the other winners and losers of the draft and what we're looking for. Uh, Jalen Hurts, of course, a winner of the draft. Of course, getting Devontae Devont Smith is a huge, huge win for him. Uh, does it move him up a ton? No, but he, now he has uh, now he has Smith and Rager uh, and Dallas Goddard, which is an awesome kind of trifecta that they got going there. So that's a big win for him. Um, um, also, if you're looking at just ultimately uh, win, wins in general for, I guess you can say for all 49ers that they're going to have like a, a decent quarterback or they, they're going to have a guy with a huge arm. Jimmy Garoppolo was a, Jimmy Garoppolo was a guy who was always injured and they always went to CJ Beathard. They benched him and stuff like that. Trey Lance at least gives him that high upside where he could be Again, like I've told people, Deshaun Watson. And then everybody in the 49ers wins. Um, also, I think, not not, uh, not a loser, but Justin Fields is going to be about neutral, I would say, for me. He's got Allen Robinson. He's got Darnell Mooney. Uh, it's not an amazing situation. I, I hate when people say, well, Nagy's never done it before. I hate when coaches say, that's like saying um, Adam Gase is the quarterback master because he is with Peyton Manning. You know what? People, people... NFL, co NFL GMs have been holding on to that for 10, 15 years. Oh, well, he did it once. He can do it again. Because you can do it once does not mean you can do it again. Does, and if you've never done it, doesn't mean that maybe you just haven't had the talent around you. Bill Belichick failed as a Cleveland Brown coach. He goes and has Tom Brady, and that was amazing. And now Tom Brady's gone, and now Bill Belichick is sucky. Does So is does Tom Brady make Bill Belichick great? Does Bill Belichick make Tom Brady great? Those So... Matt Nagy being being there for Justin Fields, maybe maybe Trubisky wasn't there. Maybe or maybe Trubisky wasn't the quarterback necessary. Maybe Justin Fields is a much better quarterback. In fact, I I actually like Justin Fields. I think he's a good quarterback, and he has good upside. And I think he does have a safe floor. So that being said, oh, I think I said I got a, I have a ring alarm. It said there's motion at my front door. Maybe I got a package. Woo, package. Uh, anyways, so. Justin Fields, I think, is kind of neutral through this. Mac Jones, again, I have him predicted as a Patriot, so I guess he's, I'm kind of neutral on him. Uh, but some of the what the weapons through there, I mean, yeah, you're going to have two tight ends that are going to at least have a competent quarterback. That's not Cam Newton. So they get a little bit of a spike up, but, I mean, ultimately you're not talking uh, about a huge spike there. Uh, let's go to the Jets. The Jets, Denzel Mims, Corey Davis, win-win. I mean, you kind of knew that that was going to happen, but, I mean, it's also nice to see. I'd really like to see a running back fit into that backfield. Uh, losers, Green Bay Packers fans, sucks to suck. 
No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Green Bay Packers fans, because Aaron Rodgers might be out of there. I mean, that's just something to note. Uh, am I selling Devontae Adams shares? No. Am I selling Aaron Jones? Well, I've kind of already been selling him because he's 26 and he's starting to get over that hump and I don't have full belief in him. So uh, I, I think that I think the plan is to be like an RBBC there. I don't get the money is one thing, but I feel like that's going to be just a situation where Aaron Jones is going to disappoint fantasy owners. So he's like RB20 on my list already. So I think he's already a sell and that's in Dynasty. Uh, so overall, we I know we've talked for 15 minutes, um, but one of the big things I want people to understand is in Dynasty, it is a long-term game, but there are short-term moments in it. And so if you can buy players now, and this is what I think drafting-wise. I really think drafting-wise, you should be drafting for 24 months out. Because, and there's a reason for it. Because if you draft 24 months out and have that solid foundation of, if that person has higher value, you are able to do more with it. If you that person ends up devaluing so much in, 20, in 24 months, you're going to have an issue trying to sell them. So these players that I see, and this is why I don't like drafting tight ends too. It's like, if you think that, oh, they're going to be great in 2022 or 2023, it's like those, those picks are going to be a lot less valuable on my list than the picks in 2021. Because, it, and, then, and why running backs are even higher. I'm like, they call me the running back kid, not king, not the dynasty football dad king. Uh, it's because like running backs produce more often right away. And there's been stats to prove it. I've done a video on it. 50% of the time that a running back's been drafted in the round one ends up as an RB one in the, so like Travis Etienne has a really good chance. And then round two, it's like, it gets a little bit lower and round three, it gets a lot lower. And we, we understand that. So when, when, when it comes to it, I am looking at short term times where I'm trying to draft these big running backs and then I'm trying to trade them. If trading doesn't happen in your league, then you're probably not in a good league. And honestly, it's probably that. Because honestly, the team should be always trying to improve. They should be either selling assets to try to rebuild for the future, or they should be buying uh, players to try to build for the now. It's what it is. So I, I understand that people will say, well, yeah, I can't trade. I can't trade. Well, hopefully you're in a league and we're going to be creating some leagues here in the summer that you can trade. I'm really excited for the continuing on the draft, but 24 months, the, the reason why I said 24 months is because I feel like if you are trying to, let's say, let's say Rondo Moore goes somewhere or even, and, and, and this is the hardest thing with Bateman. Bateman could be good two, three years on the road, but I think he's really talented. So that's why he's like slowly moving down my board because I see a short-term problem, which is Lamar Jackson, but I don't see where that long-term solution could come in. And I don't know if I want to wait two, three years down the road before he becomes something amazing. So ultimately, yes, it is Dynasty is like half, half kind of redraft, half long term. If you wait too long, you're, excuse me, you're going to be just missing out. It's my ramble on, I guess. I'm just excited for the draft. I just, I'm <sighs> round two and round three. This is good. This, I, this is where I think it gets exciting because we get a lot of these players, these running backs, these wide receivers. Uh, even some of these quarterbacks that we haven't even talked about, Kellen Mond and everything like that. We haven't even talked about them. Well, we're going to have to start talking about them. So again, this is Marcus Dynasty Football Dads, where we redo daily Dynasty videos. Jerry Judy signed Jersey, 1K. All right. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Comment, you're awesome. And I will thumbs up that comment. All right. Peace out. Take care. I'll see you later. Now turn up.